Hello, AfterBuzz fans. Welcome to another episode of Spotlight On. We have a very special guest tonight. We are talking with the wonderful, prolific, and talented Gray Griffin. We're going to talk about her brand new comedy special, my first comedy special. And, of course, we're going to talk about the amazing amount of wonderful voice roles that she has done. So stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Yeah, I haven't heard this song before, but it's got a pretty good opening stage. A nice little Big brown eyes. Yeah, I got a country girl in there somewhere. <laughs> I mean, there is nothing wrong with that. I have plenty of Brooks and Dunn on my iTunes. <laughs> the cornier, the better. I love corn. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Like, there's modern country, and it's really angry and really poignant, yes, I guess. Yeah. And then there's old time country, which is like, I lost my dog and my bar and my trailer and I'm sad. Or it's, <laughs> let's go dance because it's the weekend. <laughs> Those are my two speeds too, my two modes. It's like suicidal and ecstatic. <laughs> so you are a country girl. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I am here with the wonderful Gray Griffin. Hi, hi everybody. And I am Katie Cullen. I will be uh, conducting the crazy train, I guess. I love it. Toot toot. So thanks for joining us today. I'm so happy to be here. We're happy to have you here. Yes. I was like, I'm getting the seat, the scene. I'm like, buzz after buzz. With the bu-. Okay. It's, it's like very, bees it's and it's black and I white. And, <laughs> you know, speaking of bees, I kind of want to get right into it. Bumblebee is premiering this weekend. Yes, I'm so excited. And you are the voice of RC. Yes. And it's a reprisal of your role from, I want to say, Reven- it wasn't Revenge of the Fallen, it? was, was it? Revenge of the Fallen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So when you initially got that role, like, what was the process for that? <laughs> I have a really funny, weird story about that. It's long, though. I don't know. Do it. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's have a good time. I was on a plane, and I saw this guy hitting on this girl, and it was really cute. It was really cute. It was like, a, you know, very, I was I was into it. I was eavesdropping. I was pretending to read my S magazine. As and, you do. Um, yes. And, and it was very cute. And then they sat in different parts of the plane. And I heard him talking to his friend on the cell phone going, oh, my God, I met this girl. I'm going to, you know, he was like, he was a jerk. He was a jerk. Um, (laughs) He was not the nice guy that he seemed to be when he was talking to her. And I was like, he's awful. I hate that guy. So I thought, if I can talk to that girl and tell her how awful he is, I'm going to. But I just don't know when I'll be able to see her. So anyway, we land. I'm in the airport bathroom. I come out of the stall, and there she is washing her hands. And, And I go, Oh my god! I have to tell you something. That guy is awful. And she's like, "Wait, what?" And I go, "No, you, sh- you should have heard him talking to his friend. He's a terrible person." And she was like, "Oh my god! I wish I could do something for you." And I was like, "Well, no. I'm, I just feel better just knowing that you're going to be okay." So anyway, then I told everybody that story, and my friends were like, "Oh, great! Why do you talk to everybody? You talk to everybody, but eh. why wouldn't you?" I know. Um, but a, about a year later, I was at the final callback for RC. It was like between me and like maybe a couple other actresses. And um, I'm, I'm in the lobby, and this beautiful blonde woman comes out, and she's like, I know you from somewhere. And I was like, I know. I feel like I know you. And she's like, do you do on camera? And I'm like, no, I'm just a voiceover girl. I don't know where you would know me from. And finally, she was like, oh, my God, Burbank Airport bathroom. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And she's like, let me just say that you'll probably get this part. And I was like, really? She's like, you remember when I said I wish I could do something for you? And I was like, really? I don't know if that's – if she had a lot of say. It might have been Michael Bay. But um, maybe – and I'm just, uh, women need to look out for each other is all I'm saying. And you could get a part out of it. <laughs> but really, women need to look out for yeah, each other. Yeah, but also, yeah, just to, just to be a nice lady, you should do that. Anyway. And then you wound up voicing one of the best known female Transformers in the franchise. I know. Yes, I was very, I was very, very excited. I have a pink dress that I was going to wear to the premiere, but they don't buy it voiceover people, so. That's okay. <laughs> photo shoot. Yes. Just do yeah. a photo shoot. It'll, it'll be fine. Private get like a little story. steering wheel or, <laughs> yes. I guess, handlebars because yeah, motorcycle. Be, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Photo shoot with a pink dress on a motorcycle. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so what what did you bring into that role? You know, I came up with all these voices when I first did it, and they ended up just saying, you know what, I think we just like your voice, so let's just stick with you. And Michael Bay was actually really great to work with, funny and wonderful. Um, I was a little scared because I'd read a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he actually was really nice to me. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I and, and it was great, and I just pretty much used my voice. And then for this one, they made me they made me audition again, and I thought, oh, maybe they want something different. And I tried all these different voices, and again, we ended up with my voice. So, so what's the audition process yeah. like? Just do your best, Gray Griffin, and <laughs> we just want you to know we don't want to know that you can do a crazy Brit or you know a, a yeah 15 year old um whatever I, I did I did a plethora and then they chose thank me. you for running through your stable for us now how about just, <laughs> just jump through you? these hoops real quick yeah 
<laughs> Great, now we know you can. Time to record. Exactly. So are you excited for the fans to see this movie then? Yes, yes. And and you know, the, the man who plays um Optim wait, is it oh wait, Optim oh, wait, okay. Optimus Frank Prime is Peter Cullen. Okay. Frank Walker, Frank Walker is usually is Megatron. Megatron, Megatron. That's see how terrible. I'm terrible. Um anyway. <laughs> I may or may not like I do giant tons robots. of Star Wars stuff too, and I still have to go, wait, wait, who's that? Okay, yeah, I am a, I am a Mandalorian. Anyway. <laughs> but um but no, Megatron also is the voice of, of um Freddy on Scooby. Yeah. Yeah. So I you know, I said, "Oh my gosh, we got to do, we got to travel as as da you know as Daphne and Freddie, yes. and then let's also travel. We can also be Megatron and RC. I'm trying to. I have three kids to put through private school, basically, and I I want to do as many conventions as possible. <laughs> Those are two very different relationships. <laughs> I know. I was like, but let's cash in on this. We're a great duo. Yeah. Let's do it. I was let's like, go. I will dress like a motorcycle and I will cosplay as Daphne. I need this private school tuition money. <laughs> I would honestly love to see that. Yes. That would be incredible. Yeah. But speaking of Daphne, you've been doing that role for a chunk of time now. Yes, across I know. yeah, across multiple iterations. What was it like stepping into a role as well known as Daphne Blake? Oh, well, there's a whole other story with that because my mentor Mary Kay Bergman, who was amazing, she was the little she did much of the little boy in the Iron Giant. There was a little boy that played the part, but she did a lot of the heavy lifting for that. And okay. she was, um, you know, all the women on South Park. She was the voice of Snow White, which is like my favorite, you know, Disney character. And she was, you know, uh, she was the singing Jessie the Cowgirl, and she was Daphne, and nice. she was she was just an incredible mentor and taught me really everything that I could know about voiceover. So she passed away um, and I was like devastated. And then of course, you know, life goes on and they started, they, they were like, well, we need to fill these roles. And a lot of people were auditioning and I just felt so weird about it because it was very soon after she'd passed and I was like, I don't want to do this. I This seems so weird. Um, her husband was like, Gray, you have to do it. She loved you. She would have wanted you to do it. And I didn't study her voice. I just kind of went in and read it. And the, the booth director and the engineer said, it, it, we got goosebumps. You sounded just like her. And I was like, really? I guess just being, you know when you're friends with someone and you just sort of like start to yeah. sound alike? <laughs> oh, absolutely. How people look like they're dogs. I, I sound like <laughs> just like my best friend. <laughs> so, when you're um, saying something your friend said and then you find yourself taking on their inflections oh, and their word yes. choice. It's oh, like, yes. oh yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're very 100%. original. <laughs> yeah, but no, but I mean, I feel, and I, and I, I'm so glad that I did take the role because I feel so close to her. I, I think about her all the time, and I'm always so grateful and say thank you so much for teaching me everything that you taught me about voiceovers, and I'm so glad that I can carry on her legacy. That is incredibly sweet. Aww, that she is... was wonderful. She was an incredibly sweet person. She worked way harder than I did. <laughs> she was a great a pro. Well, it's one thing to establish the role and another thing to be able to pick up what someone else established and carry on. Yeah, and I didn't want to do an exact copy either. That's I I I, I have reprised repri repri I don't know how to talk. reprised I don't, I don't talk very well. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I do Jane Jetson and Betty Rubble and you know just some other set characters and um, I didn't want to do an impression of the first actor. Yeah. I kind of wanted to put my little spin on it. I will say Daphne's a lot snarkier than she sounded in the beginning. <laughs> Mary Kay was it, much though. nicer than I am. <laughs> but I love that, though. I love that the character has evolved from being the essential damsel in distress in the 60s to holding her own. Oh, yeah. And I have to say, I'm a fan of uh, Mystery Incorporated. Oh, me too. That's one of my favorite ones. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yes. That's... I love that Velma kind of has a girlfriend on it. Oh, and just there's yeah. so much going on. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think there's any kind of about it. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure Hot Dog Velma just... and her just like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No, they. And are... then Linda Cardellini got super famous. That I was like, oh my god, she's on Mad Men. Oh my. And then that... did you see the Green Book? Really good movie. I have not yet. She's a, she's famous. Linda Card. I mean, she was famous before. I was like excited to work with her, but now pff, she's in all these movies and everything. I'm happy for her. She was really nice. Did you do a lot of uh, table reads then? We worked together all the time. Yeah. Nice. I still have her as Hot Dog Water in my phone. <laughs> She'll be happy to know that. <laughs> That's very flattering. So it's just like, hey, Siri, call hot dog water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That is how that works. Well, so what is your favorite version of Daphne? Is it the Mystery Incorporated? or That's a pretty close one up there. Well, right now we're doing the one where it's called... Um, um, Guess Who, Scooby-Doo. Yeah. And we're meeting all these celebrities. So I thought... I hired a trainer, and I was ready to meet some darn celebrities, and they never record with us. No, <laughs> darn it! I did meet Bill Nye once, though. I did. He did record with us, and he and um and um, oh my god, Tyson. Is it the, the, Mike? Mike Tyson? No, not no. Mike Tyson. The other th amazing scientist. Oh. oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. <laughs> oh 
Okay. Um, but yeah, they both recorded with us, and I got to swing dance with Bill Nye. Oh my I god! I put it on my Twitter. I put Azula and Bill Nye swing dance. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, gotta get those clicks. So. Oh my! I'm, I'm just so <laughs> stuck on dancer. you met Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse oh, Tyson. Yes, he's amazing. They're they're both amazing guys. Yeah, they were showing me their Obama selfie when they took <laughs> a selfie with Obama. <laughs> Hashtag Science Bros. Oh yeah. But yeah, that that sounds absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I'd like to switch uh, switch gears a little bit. Your comedy special, my first comedy special, yes, just <laughs> dropped on uh, Amazon. Yeah. So that for one, I watched it. It was hilarious. Thank you so I much. I loved it. I can't believe how we've gotten tons of streams, and I mean, I I it's an, I think we've gotten like forty five thousand or something. It's only been up for like a week. I'm very excited. I can't believe it. I it's never. I thought like, well, how am I going to get people to watch it? People love, it. people love Amazon. It was pretty dang good numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what got the ball rolling for that special? Like, at one point Me. did it stop being, <laughs> well, like, at what point did it stop being, you know, I should do the thing, too. I am doing the thing. I have to credit Kate McCucci, who plays Velma on, on um, Scooby-Doo. Yeah, she just kept going, great, you, sh- you got to do stand-up. And I said, actually, that's how I started doing this. I, I was, I was like, 20, and I was doing stand-up, and I'd, I'd only done it a little bit, and I went to the comedy store. And all I did was impressions. I, I thought... I did other people's material first, and then I was like, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> okay. So then I was like, well, I do do impressions. So I started doing impressions. I did Anita. I don't, you, you're too young to remember, but there was a soul singer named Anita Baker, and she did a song called I Love You Just Because. And um, I did her. I did her. I was like, I mumble just because. I mumble just because. Just because I do. My blah, 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 blah. Anyway. <laughs> um, and that was my joke. It was just that she mumbles. You can't understand what she's saying. Ha! <laughs> and that was the joke. <laughs> we know it's I love you just because, because it's in the song title. Yes, but aside but from that. But I would that... say I mumble just because, because I, I was a comic genius. Um, <laughs> but Mind- Mitzi Shore was like, um, you need to write jokes. You do great impressions. You do great voices. But you have no material. <laughs> I just kind of went up there. I was like, what's another voice I could do? Um, <laughs> but which is better than some people. I've seen some open mics where I'm like, what are you doing? Did you just wander in off the street? <laughs> I think everyone's seen some open mics. Mics that are yeah. like that. That's open mic and like karaoke on yeah. anything but a weekend. People it's just like, kind of like microphone. <laughs> How do I get near it? Um, yeah. So so I was like, oh, okay. She's like, but you know, while you're writing jokes, go do some stand. I mean, go do some voiceovers. You should do that. And I was like, oh, great. Where are they, where are they signing up for that? <laughs> and it turned out to be like the hardest job ever to get into. But I just seemed to. I just happened to just like meet like the. It just. I don't know. It just happened the way it was supposed to happen. So um, yeah, I got Rugrats right after that, and then I got Fairly Odd Parents. Um, tr- um, just the just the pilot for that, and I've been doing that show for that just show just ended, but I did it for like almost twenty years. Yeah. So yeah, I just happened to yeah. So then I was like, gotta get back to that stand up someday. But but Kate was like, you gotta do. You should be stand up. And I was like, I started. That's how I got here. <laughs> um, but she's I was always messing her up because she was laughing, and she's like, you're the funniest person I know. Yes, Kate. <laughs> Kate said that. I was the funniest person she knows. Um, and you're just going to frame that true. and put it on the she wall. She has a lot of, your of comedy forever. friends, though, so I was like, really, Kate? <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, so that's why, really. And then I said, you know, I'm going to start, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a class. I should, I'm just going to take like a, just a very basic class. And this man named Jerry Corley, who's awesome, who used to work um, at The Tonight Show, writing jokes for The Tonight Show, and he's been doing comedy forever. And he was just a great, he's called the Joke Doctor on Twitter. Um, but he, he is, he's a joke doctor. I would have these great ideas for jokes. And he's like, great, what if you switched those two things? And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. I mean, it was just, there's such an art to writing, and yeah. I didn't know that. So I was just, you know, baby steps. But I, but I got a sitter two nights a week. I was a very bad, bad mother for a year. <laughs> oh, no. You really? got a babysitter. A Whatever shall you do. I had to do an open mic, a bunch of open mics on one of those nights, and then my class on the other night, and just writing, 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 writing in the car. And yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I was a bad mom for a year, and then I finally recorded my special, and now I'm home more. <laughs> That was, it was so much fun to watch. Are, are there plans for another one? I my first just, comedy special, too. My second comedy special is what we're going to do. Because I've, I've already started writing a bunch more material. And I was like, as soon as I get another 20 minutes. And I the thing I really love about it is I, there are so many funny people out there that have no exposure. Uh, Sebastian Corley, who's uh, who's actually Jerry Corley, my teacher's nephew or something. Really? <laughs> it was really weird. Um, but yeah, no, he's just so funny. He's like 23 years old and hilarious. And I said, oh, you must be famous or something, right? And he's like, no, I work at a prop house loading props. And I'm like, so, I mean, there's just so much talent out there. So I really, I've already got like a couple of people in mind that I've um, done bills with. And I'm like, what are you, are you on a TV show? Are you, work, what are you doing? And they're like, no, I'm still doing bringer shows, which is where you have to bring people. It's, it's awful. Uh. It's like you have to sell tickets to your own comedy show. Ooh. <laughs> 
one girl was hilarious and just brilliant. She would when she, you have to bring a certain amount of people or they won't get, let you go on stage. <laughs> oh no! She started. She went on Tinder and matched with like all these people that she wasn't even interested in and said like, "Hey, why don't you come to my comedy show tonight and then and, and tell them my name at the door and then we'll go out for drinks after." And all of them showed up. She just needed like two extra people. She said like five of them showed up, and then she ended up being seeing that she they were all mad at her after that, and then she ended up seeing that they were friend. Two of them stayed friends and were friends on Instagram. <laughs> Later, she's like, "Oh, those two guys, I brought them together." Anyway, that is a brilliant strategy. Yeah, yeah, but those bringers just it's sad. You have to bring people, and they're really funny. They shouldn't have to do that. So they're getting the next comedy special that I do. That was them. actually what I was going to ask. Who's on your list for the next? I one? have a few. I don't want to say anything yet because it's okay. it's kind of iffy because you know when you know a lot of comics, everybody's sort of like, yeah. "Hey, if you need anybody else." In the future, and it's, it's awkward because I don't like I don't like to be in charge. Of, I don't like you, to have any power. <laughs> can you can you pick me? Can yeah, you pick me? Like, please I'd pick love me. To do that, and it's like I, yeah, a lot of people would. Um, but um, and especially now that we're getting all these views, I didn't I didn't know yeah. what we were gonna do. I just said, look, I'm gonna film you. It's gonna look great. Maybe it'll just be tape for you to use, and it, we might make a show out of it. I don't really know. So there were some people who wanted to know how much they were gonna be paid and all this stuff, and I was like, eh, next. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing you a favor here. It's exposure. I know, but you know, yeah. So, and one person who was really funny, who I love, a great comic, his mom or someone was in the audience filming him with their phone oh. the entire time. So it ruined all the footage we had. Oh, so no. I was like, mm, I don't know how to tell you this. We can't have you in our special because every we could not cut that. We couldn't cut around that person filming you with their phone during the special. It's like, I know Thanks, you're very Mom. proud, but it's yes. going to be available on Amazon and we'll burn you a DVD I for know. your record. Your mom will get sent a copy. So It'll be fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Just enjoy the moment. Yeah, yeah. I did love the cuts to the audience and seeing people at one point seeing Eric Bowser yes, sitting in the back row laughing. I know. I brought all my, all my voiceover friends. <laughs> I love, And then just hearing that one person laughing really, really hard That the was whole my time. best friend from elementary school, Sean really? Quadra. He is, got a fantastic laugh. <laughs> and if you're not funny, he just will not. So when you're getting a laugh from him, you know it's, it's, it's earned. It's earned. Glorious. That that is wonderful. <laughs> did you, in terms of editing for the special, did you have final say? Were you involved in the process for that? I left it up to the director Henry Phillips, um, who's an amazing stand-up as well. He's on Silicon Valley, and he does a lot of um, TV shows. But he, yeah, he directed, and, and he's been my comedy friend since. He's always been my friend who did well at stand-up. Like when, yeah. <laughs> when I was like just, you know, I was, I, I kind of went off and started doing voiceover and he kept going with the stand-up was touring and opening for Mike Birbiglia and all these fun wow. things. Yeah, in Vegas. I, I went to see Mike Birbiglia and I, I didn't even get in and then I texted Henry. I was like, oh, I wanted to see the Mike Birbiglia show but I messed up the time on the show and he's like, oh, I was opening. I'm like, what? I, he's like, we could have gone out and partied with him after. I was like, ah, don't make me feel Why worse about missing this things? thing. I know. But anyway, he directed it. But another funny thing about that is he's got all kinds of comedy specials. You know, he's got a Comedy Central special and all these things but I... um. I thought that he had directed some of his. So I hired him to direct it. We built the set. We were, you know, we were like in the middle of directing it, of doing it. <laughs> and then I was like, so when you did this before, like, how did you? And he was like, did it before? And I go, yeah, like with the other comedy specials that you direct, like your comedy special. He's like, I didn't direct those. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> isn't this interesting? Well, you're still hired because we're in the middle of the process. <laughs> but he ended up doing a great job. And he edited the whole thing. And he's an amazing person. Wow. Yeah. He's, yeah. I mean, you never know that I he was know. a first-time director. From well, he this. does this show on YouTube, which everyone should watch. It's called um, Henry's Kitchen, where he plays this just terrible chef. Um, it's they've got tons of views. Like Sarah Silverman's tweeted, like a lot of people love them. Um, but and now he's been picked up by Thrillist to do. They fly him to New York, and there's a very fancy set, and he does like the um, master class version of Henry's Kitchen, where he's oh just God. it's really a beautiful <laughs> set, but he's still a terrible chef. <laughs> He's like, on this, you know, when I'm traveling for work, you know, the most popular question I get is, would you like to buy drugs? Um, <laughs> and I, it just, it, it's just, it, he's just a very funny guy. But so anyway, yeah, Henry's Kitchen on YouTube. You should check it out. But he's, he's a brilliant comic and director. So he's been directing his own things for a long time. Those, not okay. comedy specials, but those okay. at least. He did have some. So some. not first time, first time. Not first, but, first, but all right. pretty close. Well, it's a good IMDb credit. Yes. And a good looking special. Yes. Thank you. Um, how did you pick your material for the special? Just whatever people laughed at at open mics. You, you know, you, I write all the time. Like, I'm always, I have a little red 
book in the car that if I think of something funny, sometimes I think, oh, that's really funny. I'll remember that. No, Which, no, not, you never I'm remember, that. remember that. <laughs> Your and brain are these dumps really things. great things that I'm like, that's gone forever. Goodbye, joke. Um, so now I'm like, never let that happen again. So I have the red notebook. Even if I almost have a car accident, I'm like, at least I have that joke. But um, yeah, so I, I write down everything. And, um, and then I just take it to an open mic and I try it. At first, I, I start the open mic with like one of a joke that I know hits every time. And then if people don't laugh at that, I think, oh, these people are idiots. I'm not going to listen to anything they say. <laughs> I'm not gonna, they're, they're obviously thinking about themselves or something else right now. So, um, But if they laugh at that first joke, I think, okay, this audience has got a good little sense of humor, and I'm going to take what they have to say seriously. So, and, and Melinda Hill is also a great comic, and she worked with me on at culling the material and like what works, what doesn't, what should be restructured. I wasn't even going to do my Wizard of Oz impressions in it. Really? Yeah, Melinda was like, you need a big closer. Um, you sh- you know, I wanted I want her to be well. I think she's doing her own comedy special, but she's been at it for twenty years, and she's gorgeous, and she's hilarious, and she should have had her own special a long time ago. But so if she doesn't do her special, she will be in <laughs> my second comedy <laughs> special. Um, but no, yeah, she she said you got, what, you do these impressions. That's got to be your big closer. And I was like, oh, I've been doing this since high school. And she's like, no, you, you I, I'm so you're you real good must. at them. <laughs> yeah. So and I'm so glad I did because yeah, it's a good closer. That was, oh my God, about 30 seconds into that, I was just laid out You're laughing. so sweet. Well, I, you know, being a voiceover lady, I don't want to like rest on those laurels all the time. I'm like, I don't want to use those crutches. You know, I want to do just like, you know, just my jokes. But my manager's like, you could still do bringer shows or I could say the voice of Daphne Blake wants to come do comedy or the voice <laughs> of Vicky from the Fairly Office. Finally, I'm like, all right, you can do that. So now I get yeah. better spots at clubs. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because if all else fails, people, it, like, if all else fails, they come and go, and she's going to say funny things in a funny voice. And then you blow them away with actual great actual material. jokes. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. Good way to look at it. And also, you, I feel like they, they listen to you in the beginning. They're not like, oh, who's this? You know? Like, yeah. Sometimes they are if they think you're just some nobody. Well, you've already got that name recognition, and then you give them jokes, and then with the Wizard of Oz, you give them what they want. <laughs> the one, two. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. So what what was your favorite part of the special? Your favorite joke, your favorite moment? Like oh, what did you really like about it? Well, my I love my son being interviewed because I, I'm so glad that Henry interviewed him, which was sort of like a last minute thing. He was just at my house shooting other stuff and and my son is an actor and he's funny and everything. He's 11 years old, but he's very mature and he would stay up and wait. He he loves comedy. He's he's a huge Jim Gaffigan fan. Like when he was seven or something, we took him to see Jim Gaffigan. Um, and he thought it was just going to be a movie. And I was like, no, he's in there. We're t- this is a stand-up show. And he's like, <laughs> he's really in there. He was so excited. So he loves jokes. He loves comedy. And he's got a great little mind about it. And he gave me great notes. So I would come, I would always record my sets at open mics. And then I would play them. And he would give me notes. And he was the one who really saved a joke that I do. Where he said, just wait a little bit of time and then say that part. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, like, I'll give it a few beats. It's the part where I talk about uh, my grandma. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm like, anyway, I'm like, I was seven. You know, so I wait. And then I say that and it gets a way bigger laugh he was right oh, yeah he was right because it's that little bit of comedic timing yes. and they're just waiting for the punchline yes. and then when it hits and no one's expecting i was seven <laughs> after a rant about well who you'll you have know. to see the special to know what joke we're talking you about. really do <laughs> if you have amazon prime you can watch yes. it that's how i did it <laughs> my amazon friend said she just asked her or not siri but what's the alexa, alexa she was like yeah. i just called out alexa play it and it just came on that's when you know you've hit the big time when alexa's <laughs> noticing you. <laughs> Alexa knows your name and how to pronounce it. Oh my it. god, Alexa, I'm such a big fan. <laughs> now, are there any behind the scenes stories that you want to share with us? Funny things that happened while taping, oh things that wound up on the cutting room floor? Oh, we we it's funny that we we just pretty much taped one of my days and I didn't realize how funny just my everyday life is it is a weird like i mean i did have to go i had to do some auditions and i was like we have to stop taping because i've got to do some auditions i gotta like pull over here real quick because i can't get to the studio and henry's like oh we'll be recording that (laughs) you know but and i I, you don't think about it when you live it every day but i was like this is sort of a weird life i do i do it all week long i'm like let me find a quiet side street so i can do these weird cartoon voices into my phone and and i have to deal with barking dogs and lawnmowers and all kinds of things and that all happened so i feel like everyone who does recording occasionally you just have this all right i'm right in the middle of something i've got a good flow and someone's car alarm went off i know know. okay time to scrap all of that and (laughs) 
I listened to a story. I think it might have been This American Life or something, or The Moth, or a woman did voiceovers, and she a lot of times that in hotel rooms you'll you'll go into the closet to to you. I've yeah. done that before. Everybody's done that. And if you've been traveling and, and you do voiceovers, you do your auditions in the closet. And she put said, the pillows on the wall. Yes, close the door. Yeah, it's all yeah, it's yeah. all there for you. Yeah, it's like yeah. all my material. I'll just put the comforter up. It's great. Um, and, but she got locked in the closet no. and she couldn't get out. And she said she like this group of German tourists. She was like pounding on the walls and <laughs> she said she happened to speak German. She and. She, <laughs> It's a very good story. You should look it up. I don't know. Google voiceover actress gets trapped in closet. So she did a full on R. Kelly and got stuck in the closet for exactly. forever. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a crazy thing. It's a weird life. Has that ever happened to you? No. Or any of those weird, like, <laughs> I was doing a recording and. Oh, gosh. There, it, well, there's been some really weird sessions I've been to. I was I was directed by an on camera person who wanted to be in the booth with me, and he wanted to say action and point at me while <laughs> he was like this <laughs> far away from me. I met some, and then you know, fun celebrities and you know, just Pee Wee Herman was really nice. Really? Yeah. But it was weird when I met Pee Wee Herman or Paul Rubens. They gave us like they scared us a little bit. He came to do Scooby, and they they like gave us all these like things not to do like don't look him directly in the eyes don't ask him about this don't you know and I was like I was terrified by the time he got there I was like oh what am I gonna do that messes up and then he turned out to be just like the most loving sweet kind person I guess it's just his his people are probably doing a great job and we were aptly terrified so then he just seems so much nicer (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's probably how I, I, I don't know well, and I'm sure, like, for every single one of those, don't do this, don't do that, like, for every no motorcycles on the show floor, someone had to have brought a motorcycle to the show floor at least once in there's order for reason. that to be a thing. Yeah, there's always a reason for that somebody actually printed up a sign about something. <laughs> <laughs> do you have, essentially, any of those, any someone did a thing that was super weird and now it's part of your rule set? Like, don't ever do this. Oh, God kind of an odd question i know yeah, well a lot of people ask me the same question I, I always feel like i mean there are some everyday there's some things that i think you should be able to ask and you know but there are some things that i'm like just google that that's like <laughs> it's just i don't know, like or like what have you done and, and you know and it's like okay Everything? Well, well no but i just feel like well like you were so great and you like research and you knew a few things to bring up you don't want to be the person like tooting your heart <laughs> or like when somebody's like you look familiar what were you in and then you're like was it this and they're like no 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 not that so then you just seem like this weird braggart that's like i was on this and they could just they just bat you away like some annoying softball <laughs> not that no <laughs> Have you ever had, like, you get all sorts of fun stuff at conventions, I'm sure, the the good and the hilariously awkward. Have you ever had someone ask you to do a voice that you don't remember doing? Yes. I was um, Jean in Bayonetta, um, and it was, <clears throat> it was a video game, and then it became, and then it was a big anime movie, and I did not remember it because it was like one <laughs> afternoon of my life. And they brought me the, vid- the, the, you know, they brought me the case of the video game and or the movie. I'm not really sure. But anyway, they wanted me to sign it. And I was like, oh, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to ruin your thing. But I, this is not me. I wasn't in this. And they walked away just <laughs> bewildered. Like, oh, okay, thank you. And left. And then I was like, and then they came back like 20 minutes later after waiting in line again, which I feel terrible. Oh. And he was like, uh, yeah, you. I just Googled it. You are this. And I was like, he's like, I checked it on several platforms. And you are. And I was like, oh, oh well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> But I feel like that's kind of a kind of a douchey thing too. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't remember. I do that's, a lot of things. That's hysterical. <laughs> I mean, I pulled up your IMDb page and Chrome chugged trying to load it. Like you've done a lot of things. That's a good. I should. That needs to go on my. I need to quote that. That's good. Chrome. Chrome. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> When the Cadillac of browsers cannot load my IMDb page for content, yeah, <laughs> oh, I will freeze your computer. Anyway. I don't know. That's kind of terrifying. Like, I will freeze your I computer. I will freeze your computer, and then I'll thaw it out with some blue fire and lightning. <laughs> Peasants. We need to talk about Azula. I feel, I feel like you can't get through a long-form interview without talking about Azula. She she's, is... It just She's been my favorite character ever. I mean, well, she was so well-written, and she's just so purely evil. And a lot of people ask me, like, who would win in a battle between, like, Vicky and Azula? And I'm like, are we really asking me this question? Come on. Why would she... Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, she she's yeah. 
I, I just feel so lucky to have been able to voice her. And I know that they wanted to go with the celebrity. They, they started they started high and they like got down to the voiceover people. But um, a lot of people said that I didn't, that a lot of people yelled when they auditioned as her. And I just felt like she was such a powerful character that I wanted to do everything very quietly because I felt like she was so powerful that it was even more creepy if she didn't yell. She just annihilated you. Quietly. I mean, you're right. <laughs> you're yes. right, and that's terrifying. The quiet ones, the ones you have to watch. That's what the neighbor always says. They were so quiet. You never would have known. <laughs> <laughs> so have your first impressions of Azula, when you first got the script, when you first started, have they changed from then, your opinion on the character? Um, like She's become more near and dear to my heart just by meeting so many people that just enjoy the heck out of her you know I mean I I didn't really realize what uh, how much it many people it would touch when I did it and I worked alone a lot of times I didn't really work with other people so like when I went mad and cut my hair and all that stuff like I was all by myself like I was crying and everything in the booth but I was by myself so um yeah but I'm I just feel so grateful just because people come up and go uh, they tell me these amazing stories like my mom was you know fighting cancer and we watched this show and it bonded us you know I mean and just amazing amazing things you never know that just in some booth by yourself on a microphone but um so um yeah she was she was a bad girl but she did some good oh yeah and were, were you expecting Avatar to be this much of a cultural touchstone when you started working on it? Absolutely not. No, and I didn't even know. Tara Strong's a very good friend of mine. She plays Bubbles on Powerpuff Girls, and she's every she's Harley Quinn. We work together quite a bit because if she's Timmy on Fairly Odd Pairs, mm-hmm. you know I'm Catwoman. She's Harley. Like we're we're always together. You're and, both um, everyone. We're always <laughs> we're the yin and the yang. We'd like to start our own podcast. Do Tweet it us about it. <laughs> Absolutely. We were trying to think like what would our name be? And I was like, what about Betty and Veronica? But we don't want to like I don't know, just something. But we are very that. <laughs> We're, we're the yin and the yang. But um, anyway, it was so funny. There was a there was a BuzzFeed quiz online recently. Yes. But I was like, are you a gray or a Tara? And basically, like, if you're a really nice person who loves animals and hates bullies, then you're Tara. And if you're kind of a jerk, <laughs> you're me. I was like, this person, it should have just been called, like, are you a, kind of a sweetheart or more of a jerk? Wasn't there um, also an option to get Rob Paulson on that quiz? There was. There was. I know. And there was, like, I think there might have been a Roger Craig Smith, too. I don't know. Bob of course, there's a Roger Craig wrote Smith. it. Yeah, I was like, the person who wrote this quiz. Oh, it's funny though. I said the person who wrote the quiz obviously likes you better to Tara, and she goes, but she's like, I looked them up, and they only follow you on Twitter. They don't follow me. <laughs> it was very, it was very strange. Anyway, but um, I don't even remember what I was talking about. Um, Tara, what was I saying? Oh, we were talking about Avatar. Oh yeah, so, so she she dragged me to my first convention. She was like, you got to come do these conventions. There's one in Florida. We'll we'll room together. It'll be fun. And I'm like all right I don't know if anybody's gonna know me she's like no they'll know you just bring a headshot I was like okay of course she has like merch I mean she's yeah. got like snap bracelets and like uh, pictures with all you know now I I've done it too but yeah. at the time I was like give a headshot anyway and people were kind of like walking by like mm, who are you and then I thought I thought Tara see I knew nobody would know who I was and then finally one person comes up and like did you do the voice of Azula on Avatar and I was like oh yeah I did and then they were like I'll be right back. So they started telling people, and then pretty soon people were like, oh, my God. And I had no idea she was so popular. So, she, There's something about a really good, well-rounded villain that just hits people where they live. I play a lot of villains, too. And I'm, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm nice. I would say who's your favorite, but I think we just hit that. <laughs> yeah. Who's your second favorite? Yes, I know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I play so many mean people. I don't play a lot of nice people. And I feel like I'm pretty sweet. But I just, I was telling my friend that, like, I feel like I must just squash down all my anger all day by being nice. And then when I get in the booth, I'm just like, you know. It's either the booth or traffic. And at least in the booth, it's productive. <laughs> yes, exactly. I want to make money being a jerk. <laughs> As opposed to just, it. oh, it's time yeah. for the 101 again. I don't do it for free. Regional humor. <laughs> Are there any types of characters that you haven't gotten to play yet that you'd like to? Gosh. Well, Snow White is my favorite Disney character, and I got really close to, to playing her in a, um, it, for to be the voice match for her. Um, but I didn't nail the singing part. I couldn't. I mean, I, I am a singer, but I sing like me. Like, I, I was in a band, and I sing like my voice. It's hard to yeah. sing. You know, I don't know. Um but um, but I did kind of do. Oh, you look at these beautiful little men. Oh, did you wash your hands? And I, and I just had so much fun. I love Snow White. I did. I played her in college at kids' parties, but I didn't know enough about the character at the time. And people were asked. The kids would ask you all these elaborate questions, and I gave them the wrong answers. They're like, "Where do you oh, no. live?" And I was like, "I live. I live in, in a cottage in the woods." And they're like, "Oh, didn't you marry the prince and move to the castle?" And I was like, "I." I 
go there to get away from the prince when I'm, he's driving me crazy. You know, or whatever. <laughs> it's a vacation cottage. <laughs> it's fine. Like, the mother's like, come away from the Snow White child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> deranged Snow White. Um, yeah, no, I didn't. But that was kind of disappointing not to get that. But um, sometimes I turn down things if I don't think I can keep the voice up for very long. Oh. You know, like like a lot of boys, like voice, like kind of like kids like that. You know, like I'm just like, how long am I going to be able to do that? On Loud House, I play Lana, but then she gets balanced out with Lola, her twin. And Lana talks a lot like that. She's like, oh, I'm just going to fix this car. And I got like these frogs and stuff. And then Lola comes in and talks like this. And that kind of like <laughs> smooths it out a little. You get a little bit of a break. So for Loud House, and it's not the first time that you've played multiple characters in the same show. How do you handle that? Do you do one character at a stretch, or do you switch voices if you're having a conversation with yourself? Like, I, how's that go? I, I don't need to. Some people like to separate it out and like do one, you know, run as one character and then go back and. Do, but I like to talk. To, I like to talk to myself basically. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do. I do Lana and I do Lola. I play Scoots, a little old lady too. I play her and she's fun. And and I play the lady who works in the school office who's just real fun. And um, oh gosh, that's such a great show. And, and I work with my son Tex who plays Lincoln. Yeah, how is that recording with him? Do you do a lot of table reads together? Do you? We do don't individual? do table reads. I feel bad because I hardly ever don't tell anybody. I like to, I li- I'm like Oprah. I like to just, I don't, you know, Oprah was always like, I didn't watch the movie because I wanted to see it with all of you. It's like, ah, and you were busy and you didn't want to watch the movie twice. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wanted my first experience to be with you. The I know. It's like, you well, ran out of time. Nice, Oprah. She never hugged anybody. Either. She was always like with the hands. Like they always thought she was going to give them a hug and then she would grab their hands. Anyway, um, but, but no, I don't. But then my son thought he could get away with not reading the scripts either. And he was like fumbling. The first week I was like, oh no, he's terrible. I mean, he was really really good but he didn't he didn't know what was going on i was like you have to read the scripts he was like you don't read them i was like i've been doing this for 20 years anyway <laughs> so now he has a guy i don't have time to go through the scripts with him so there's a guy that we hired to just look it over with him let him read it through yeah so. i mean you've been doing this for longer than oh, he's been yeah. alive you like, can you can't, you're used to this don't coast yet tex wait wait till you're retired for that <laughs> But no, but it's really fun working with them. And we always would go out on Fridays anyway, but I would like leave Nickelodeon, go back, pick him up, and we'd go to sushi or a movie or something. Nice. And now we just get in the car and leave straight from Nickelodeon to our little date night Friday nights. Nice. Yeah. That that sounds absolutely adorable. It's fun. He's adorable. He is adorable. He's such a cutie. Yeah. He just he's doing all kinds of on camera stuff now too, which I never really I didn't I did a few little things, but mostly mostly I do voiceovers. But he just played Pete Davidson as a kid in that um, guest book mo- uh, guest book show on TBS. Anyway, okay. and it's funny because when he got the part, nobody knew who T- Pete Davidson was. And then when he started, when he got <laughs> engaged to Ariana Grande, I was like, oh, everybody's gonna know who Tex is playing now. <laughs> It was all about me and Tex. <laughs> I'm that guy before he was famous. Oh yeah, now everybody's like that guy. Oh my god. Yeah. So he what what else is he doing? Is he doing? Oh, just he's that doing. Longer? He just did a movie called um, Oh shoot, La, Re- La Revolution, and he played a character named called Glasses. It was sort of like a Stand by Me movie. It's very early. It hasn't it hasn't been out yet. Um, and he's he's on a lot of cartoons. He does um, Vampirina, that show. He plays Fang okay. Bert, the little wolf boy, and he, he's on Super Wings, the little plane. My my four year old actually loves Super Wings, <laughs> and I don't love it, but I, I let him watch it because my because his brother's on it. It's not. You anyway. don't have to love everything. It's not very educational. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Please, Super Wings people, don't yell at me. I'm sorry. It's like, oh, Texas fired? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like the mom disapproval. It's not, I oh, know. I don't like it. It's it's not very educational. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Anyway, I prefer Sesame Street. But... Well, who doesn't prefer Sesame Street? But the kids do love Super Wings. I mean, my son really loves it. So my, th- my four-year-old. I have three. I have a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and, and Tex. So. Yeah. I mean, the Super Wings, the Paw Patrol, the My Little the Pony. Pony. Like, <gasps> I've done those, though. So so I'm not mad at Paw I've I've been employed by Paw Patrol, so I'm not going to say anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are actually really cute, though. They are. Uh, all right. I want to switch tactics a little bit. You you said in the special that you were a true crime fan. Oh, yes. Yes. What what are you a fan of? What, like, TV shows or movies or podcasts or... Serial killers. I thought I was so unique with loving the serial killers, but now I realize everybody... I started listening to my favorite murder podcast, yes. and I was like, oh, everyone likes... <laughs> I'm not original at all. Um, but, no, I just I know all the serial killers. I know, like, you know, how many people they killed, like, what they did, and, you know, and I'm... You know, it's fascinating to me. And I um, I read uh, Patton Oswalt's uh, wife's book, Michelle yeah. McNamara, wrote that um, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which mm-hmm. I was, like, fascinated by. I had seen so many 
many um, forensic files and stuff about that guy, yeah. that murderer. And I would always be like <laughs> waiting for them to find him. I was like, oh, they must have found him by now. I got to find out who this guy was. And I'd be like, one time I was late to a session because I was like, I got to find out like who the guy was. And then they're like, the person was never found. And I'm like, what? I mean, it was just like <laughs> no payoff at all. Um, so when that book came out, I was like, oh, I'm still not going to know, but there's more clues. And it was just a fascinating book. If you haven't read it, you guys should read it. I'll be gone in the dark. And now, and then a week after I finished the book, they found him ah, through one of those DNA. DNA. Is that like ancestry. It was com, ancestry. Yeah, it was like something like that. Something yeah. like twenty three and me, where you send it in yeah. and they can. Yeah. Hmm. So there's copyright issues with those sites, but they also help catch serial killers. Yes. So. Yes, and lots of crimes solved from that. Um, I follow uh, Billy Jensen, one of the investigators, one of the uh, main investigators on uh, for that uh, for that crime. He did a lot of serial killers, but he tweets. He's been tweeting a lot about like just different people they found because of and, and part of it was because of the Golden State Killers uh, yeah. stuff. Like they they were like, oh, we you know it's not him, but th- we did find this other guy, and you know it's a lot of bonus, a lot of little Easter eggs, <laughs> Easter egg serial killers, and it's just fascinating now. Yeah. Like every time there's a leap in technology, suddenly all of these old cases are oh we can solve that now. Like when DNA evidence came around, oh, it changed yeah. everything. And how many untested kits there are just because it's yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we can get around to those and the backlog yes but yeah so you you talked a little bit about your serial killer gimmick which was one of my favorite jokes (laughs) in the special (laughs) absolutely just so great again watch the special (laughs) y'all what would your serial killer name be like we have the co-ed killer and we have this and we have that like what would the gray griffin the (laughs) blank oh my goodness uh the bouquet basher the 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 grifter (laughs) The Griffin to her. I don't know. <laughs> the Scarlet Lady. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Know. Um, the Equalizer, because I would and I would kill the people that everybody hates. I would be a little heroine. <laughs> Somewhere Denzel I'm Washington sort of... is going. Wait a minute. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. I guess it would be kind of a Dexter type thing because I would kill people that are annoying. It's so. like, well, you know, it, it was a murder, but yeah. she kept asking if an item that didn't scan correctly was free. <laughs> and I know. <laughs> she videotaped people's uh, comedy specials with her phone and ruined things. <laughs> <laughs> that lady, she'd be dead. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. Uh, I hope she's not watching because that's terrifying. I hope she is watching. <laughs> All right, I don't know how to follow that up. Um, are there? I'm gonna, sw- I'm gonna switch again because yeah, that's kind of no. like okay. <laughs> Murder is usually where things wrap up <laughs> for uh, at least one person yeah. involved, <laughs> and then you have to drag it. You wrap it and then you drag it off and to... okay, cement, lake. <laughs> oh, you've prayer. got ideas. Okay, you're not the only murderino here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, are there any ongoing projects that you would like to be a part of? Oh. Serieses, video games, etc. I, I have all of my friends do that critical role thing. I can't like. I mean, they're really close to me, so I couldn't like ask them because it would be like someone asking me if, if they could be in the next yeah. um, comedy special. <laughs> it's just too awkward, and I don't want. I would lie to their face and say yes, you will be in it, and then never talk to them again. Um, <laughs> but, but like ghosted critical role is so cool. And Mary Elizabeth McGlynn and Sam Regal and you know Matthew Mercer, they're like really close friends of mine, and I. Um, really want to do it but I but but the thing is I would need to get really good at role play I don't know how good I'd be at the role playing stuff Um, but I might study up on it and then like say hey I'm I've got a few things I'd like to show off for you (laughs) but if they ever asked me to and if they saw this and if they just decided to tweet me or call me or if people saw this and thought we want to see great do it and then they tweeted at them so it wouldn't be weird me asking and the critical role hashtag explodes (laughs) (laughs) Critical condition. (laughs) (laughs) Have you played D&D before? A little tiny, tiny bit when I had a boyfriend that was into it, and then I was very short-lived. So like (laughs) three editions ago or something, a ways back. It was a while. Yeah, it was like a 94 or something like that. Actually, um, well... Brian Andrews, who is like a huge at Pixar, um, and um, and his brother, um, who's even bigger at Pixar, who did um, Brave, and his name's Mark Andrews. Anyway, yeah. if you ever watch a, a recent Pixar 
anyway, Mark Andrews. They did big. it. Yeah, yeah. They used to play that all the time, um, and they had like a game that went on every Sunday for, and they even planned their lives around. It. Like he planned his wedding around it. He's like, I cannot miss my my, you know. But it paid off because now he's like huge at Pixar. But um, I always <laughs> wanted to play with them, but I didn't. No luck in that department either. Well, there's a ton of groups out here. Yeah. Maybe I'll start with a bad group and just make all my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you start with a group of first-timers. So yeah. everyone's going, what, what's a critical failure? Yeah. What's this? What What is my charisma? <laughs> I know. Yes. I love it. Yeah. It was, yeah. There was an Onion article about Sarah Sanders, like, it was funny saying a, she's got like a charisma negative three or whatever and she's trying to do <laughs> and, and, and even, written like it's a campaign yes, oh I yeah like... no. i saw she's that trying to pull off is... these things with a with a charisma negative three or something yeah <laughs> she's got a four in charisma which means yeah. she has a negative three to her modifiers so that's not good oh you're i mean, there's a lot to learn i played <laughs> twice this weekend so <laughs> which is a lot yes yeah and i i'm curious what line or lines do fans ask you to say the most oh, often? Boy. As Azula, it's always, um, that's a sharp outfit, Chan. Sharp enough to puncture the hull of an Empire-class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea, because it's so sharp. And then her weird <laughs> that laugh she does when she was trying to flirt. That was her flirting. Yeah. Just telling someone they have a nice outfit, and then it ends in ruin and murder. So maybe, maybe it always I comes am back a to lot murder. like Azula. <laughs> they they actually like made her look a lot like me. They they kind of animated her to look like me. So the same like motions and yeah, they came in kind of my face and yeah. I had a lot big forehead back then. I didn't have any bangs. My grandma kept telling me get bangs, and I was like, oh, you're cute. But I feel like your grandma right. said a lot of things oh, to you when you were seven. Did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was very... I always say, if my grandma ever told you you were attractive, sh sh you are attractive. <laughs> she did not um, give out compliments unless she would... Yeah. And she would go up to people at the mall and be like, Mijita, you have a big forehead. You need some bangs. You have a big forehead. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to walk away from her now. <laughs> we're not related. And I don't look Mexican either. Like, I'm very... <laughs> and she looked... You know, she was a little Mexican lady and I could, you know, pass for just some gringa. So I was always like, oh, I'm just... I don't know who that little Mexican lady is. <laughs> Not my grandmother. <laughs> then she's following after you. Yes. Wait for me. Like, no, no, She went never. wedding dress shopping with me and it was like criticized. I was like, don't tell other people. You can tell me. I was like, this person <laughs> just spent $5,000 on a dress and you're like, Mika, you need something with just to show your waist and big down here because you have a big nalgas. <laughs> you should not. You look like a sausage in that dress. You look like a sausage. <laughs> So she should have been doing wedding dress helping, but before they she bought the dress. She was right. Okay, yeah, I mean, in her defense, she was absolutely right. But these women were like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> she's, she's, she just, we don't let her out much. It's okay. It's fine. Everything's fine. You know how it gets. <laughs> Are there, I'm, I'm losing things right now. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Because this, I wasn't actually aware that you did this voice until we sat down, but you are the new voice of the redhead yes. on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. I, it's such a huge, that's like my favorite ride at Disneyland. I love that ride so much. And I just, I knew it was a problem. I, I knew that the, um, we wants the redhead. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because my, my Tex, who's 11 now, but was like eight at the time, we had just learned about human trafficking because we had been to Portland and we learned about the Shanghai tunnels and it's a whole thing. You should go on that tour if you ever go to Portland. But it's horrifying. And we were on Pirates of the Caribbean and it's, it's playing out. And my son's like, is that human trafficking? He's like my little social justice warrior. And I was like, kind of, yeah, I guess, yeah. kind of. And he was like, we like, you know pirates are bad. Pirates do bad things. And he was like, they, need, they can't have that at Disneyland. That's terrible. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah. I said, people get real cranky when you start changing things. And he goes, um, if they can change it to put Johnny Depp on the ride, they can change to take out the human trafficking. <laughs> Your son is amazing. I know. He really <laughs> is. Um, and I had no idea that I would have something to do with, like, fixing the problem. But I told him, like, oh, my God, I got a call back. For the, to, I said, they're changing that part. Text. And he was like, good, good for them. And I said, and I got a call back. And then I kept going back and back again and back. And I'm like, oh, my God, if I end up being the redhead, that would be just the most amazing thing. Because that's my favorite ride ever um and now she's got a pop figurine people are really yeah. like championing her and also um azula's pop figurine came out the same time so i was like two pops in one i, was, I didn't I, collect a Funko pops before but now <laughs> I might. there was a reptar one no because i played reptar yeah. on the rugrats and um and there's a and a catwoman one i think those are my only oh and the wonder woman so oh and captain marvel Oh, and the Captain Marvel movie's coming out, and I play Captain Marvel. So exciting I for know. that. Oh, and I love 
Brie Larson, who's playing. I mean, I'm just such a fan of her. So I feel like we're kind of the same. <laughs> and that's, yeah. <laughs> people course. tweet yeah, at us together. Works. Like when people <laughs> mention Captain Marvel, they'll tweet at me and Brie Larson. I'm like, we're in the same tweet. <laughs> she doesn't know who I am. Anyway. I'm sure she does. <laughs> that room movie was so good. A funny thing about that, and Kate Micucci, who, you know, plays Velma, and is an amazing comic. If you haven't seen Garfunkel and Oates, Kate Micucci's wonderful. But it was funny because she saw Room, and I saw Room, and Room, if you don't know, it's about this woman that was, like, held captive in a storage unit and assaulted. Oh, um, that one. Yes, when she raises her child, you know, she raises a little boy. Anyway, it's this horrifying movie, and it's based on a true story, and it was awful. But, I mean, but it was great. Um, yeah. but, but Great Kate, movie. Kate was awful like, story. I was just like, I saw Room, and I was like, yeah, and she's like, Mm, I want to be a mom. <laughs> it's like you is meant to that, see that, that movie. Your, <laughs> that's what you want. That's the away lesson with? that you took away. Great. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's positive. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, that's that's Kate. She's a little Miss Pollyanna. Like, <laughs> she find a good silver lining in the storage unit assault. <laughs> but I mean, you need someone like that in yeah. your life. Someone who can always be like, okay, but here's a good thing yeah, to focus on. She's a great mom. <laughs> <laughs> You can't really neglect your child when you're, <laughs> when you're you can't when get you're more locked. than three feet away from them at all times. <laughs> oh boy! So. Yeah, that's not a Captain dark Marvel. movie at all. <laughs> Captain Marvel, yeah. So Captain Marvel. <laughs> Super excited. Yes, yes. Yeah. What is it like voicing uh, Captain Marvel, Wonder Woman heroes that are so iconic for so many people? It's a it, it, it's a little bit of pressure because I don't want be, I want people to be happy with what I've done when it means so much to them. Um, the Wonder Woman stuff when that exploded, you know, when Wonder Woman came out, I was just having my daughter too, and I I you know I'd, I'd been a mother of two boys, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, a girl, it's going to be so different. I need to make sure that she knows that she's strong and sticks up for herself, and you know, and Wonder Woman was everywhere, and um, so it was funny because a lot of the baby clothes, like the Gap, did all these clothes that said like, my mom is Wonder Woman, you know, and it was all these. And <laughs> I, I got every single one my friends were getting me like because you really are it's amazing um, yes. so uh, but yeah no it, it it is a little bit of um, it's a little intimidating but I hope that I'm delivering you know I, I, I just try to go in there and just do what I would want to hear I'd say if people are tagging you and Brie Larson in the same tweet that you are uh, you're nailing yeah, it I'm doing okay I'm doing oh okay. yeah love her <laughs> well we are running a little short on time yeah. do you have any upcoming projects that you can tell us about oh my goodness that I can well, I'm yeah, really excited stickler. about I'm really excited about Unikitty on um, Warner Brothers. I, I play Puppy Corn, and um, and Tara Strong plays Unikitty. Yeah. We're back together again, um, and it's just it's getting great. It's it's such a funny funny show to do, and I, I'm just so proud of it. it um, we've gotten some Annie nominations. Tara got nominated for an Annie, and um, and the show's getting lots of attention. A Lego set came out, and my my son said, "I want the Mama Lego." We went we went to Target, and my my four year old was like, "Oh, I want that Mama Lego," because he had seen that I have pictures of Puppy Corn. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like, we're going to get the Mama Lego. They actually gave us free ones. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about Unikitty. There's so many things. Loud House, is, we're still doing tons of those. Um, I'm doing a lot of things for DreamWorks. I'm doing the new uh, She-Ra um, and uh, Dragon Rescue Riders. And I'm doing Harvey Street Kids. I'm playing like four things on that. And um, lots of DreamWorks. There's a lot of DreamWorks projects. But yeah, they're pumping them out, cranking them out. I feel like DreamWorks is a good place to be right now in terms of animation. Yeah, yeah. And Netflix is taking a lot of Nickelodeon people. Netflix, I can't wait to see what they've got up their sleeve animation-wise because they've got a lot of – well, they, you know, they're they're distributing all the DreamWorks stuff, but yeah. they're hiring from a lot of the Disney people and the Nickelodeon people are going to Dream – I mean, going to Netflix. So we'll see what they, what they do. I'm sure they have all sorts of fun stuff in their back pocket. Yeah. All right. And uh, where can the people go on the internet, on social medias, if they want to keep up with you? Well, my Instagram, I got, I, don't, I started an Instagram for my son and I had us both on the same one. And then one day I couldn't click on mine anymore. <laughs> Texas is very popular on Instagram, Tex Hammond. Um, he's an artist. He puts his art out. So I can't get back to my Instagram. Facebook is pretty much just for my family and it's just mostly, it's boring. You wouldn't want to, it's my kids and food. Um, and <laughs> just top of my latte. It's just very mom-ish. Um, <laughs> but sometimes but Twitter, the top of your latte is real cute. It is. Sometimes they do a heart and it looks like a butt. Or those little leaf patterns. And you got to take a picture. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but uh, I, I like to freak out waiters when they bring. I, I, it's river. It's I'm assault. I'm I'm being. They they're like me too, Gray. Um, but but sometimes it's a heart and if they give it to me upside down, I go, "Is this my butt?" You know. And they're like, "Oh." They get very. Um, <laughs> 
Oh, but um, but Twitter's the place to to. Get. I'm very active on Twitter politically. So hopefully, when all this passes, I'll be funny again. I try to be funny like every fifth tweet, but like while the world's ending, I'm just like, uh, I, yeah. can't, I can't just ignore it. Somebody's like, when are you gonna start doing jokes again? I was like, when the babies are out of cages, we'll do jokes again. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but no, but yeah, Twitter's where to find me at Gray Delisle. Um, yeah. And is there anything you'd like to say to your fans? Thank you so much for keeping me employed and come get <laughs> hugs when I'm in your town because I do a lot of conventions. I've got tons slated for I'm going to Tampa and Puerto Rico and all kinds of places this year. So and I'd love to I love to meet you guys. You guys really keep me going and you it's you're inspiring to know that how many of you that I've touched and what the shows have meant to you. So come give me a hug and um I can't wait to meet you guys. Yeah, keep an eye on the Twitter for the con schedule, yeah? Yes, yes, absolutely. Awesome. I always tweet about that. Well, thank you so much thank for coming you. in today. It's You're been lovely. a blast. We both love red lipstick. Yeah, we do. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. thanks again. Thank Have a you. wonderful day. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.